So that's all done anyway. The bleeper's still bleeping. I have a day off today, um, so time to actually get some work done. Uh, it's a little bit chilly, um, there is some sun at least. Uh, I've got some priorities. Um, one of them is the, uh, the stove. I need to, I was going to clean it out, um, get rid of all the soot. Um, so I was going to do a, a short piece on that. Uh, other priorities are, um, you've guessed it, insulation, starboard side. Uh, I need to get that done. And I also would like to see if I can get hold of some uh, some board or wood or ply well some plywood uh, or something similar so that I can make up the the starboard berth. Um, uh, I'm also raising the the stove uh, by about two inches. The rest of the day, I am going to do a heap of tidying up. Oh, and I've got some laundry to do. Great. Just in the process of moving things about. So what I'm doing today, I am having a bit of a sort out. Um, and moving things from one place to another so that I've got access to one of the last areas of the boat where I need to put some insulation on. Oh, I've left this far too late. It's getting cold but I'm determined to get on with something. Um, this is the what we'll call the, the starboard berth in the main saloon. Uh, it's also going to be uh, double up as a seat. I've put in some some new support timbers, so they're going to uh, form the, the basis of the the seat come berth. So I'm going to use this stuff. I I use a lot of this stuff. Rust converter. Rustin's rust converter. about here which will make the berth about six feet long and then at this end I'm going to have to construct a bulkhead just here and I think this is where I'm going to have my composting toilet so that's another thing that I've got in the back of my mind it's kind of a priority. But the problem is I have so many priorities and I end up getting nothing done. So that has to change. This is uh, a couple of days later and um, where I've put the, uh, the Rustin's rust converter on 
Um, where it's worked the hardest has gone black, um, and then the rest of it goes like a bluey grey colour. Um, so it's all nice and dry now. What I want to do now is just go over it with some paint. Well that's as much as I can do for now because I've used up that tin of paint completely. I do have another tin, um, but I think I will wait for this to dry and it will get another coat I think. And I just need to continue further forward. So that's the second coat of paint on. And that is now just about ready, I think, to get some insulation on. I suppose I should mention uh, health and safety uh, when you're using something like this uh, make sure you're in a, a ventilated area always follow the instructions on the can <coughs> oh. Nothing for you, I'm afraid. Today I'm going to clean the stove. Um, and to help me to do that, um, I'm going to use a plastic bag. I have a, a set of uh, cleaning brushes. And these have uh, various size of brush. Uh, but also uh, like an extension handle. I have um, well, this is the this is the, the main end of it. This is the Hoover. Um, so I have uh, a pair of disposable gloves because it's going to get a bit mucky. An H three bit. And that bit is for, there's a couple of plates, there's a plate at the top, uh, just at the side here, and then there's another plate at the bottom, just here, and they're held on with some uh, screws, and if you take them off that gives you access to the top um, of the void above the oven, and the bottom uh, below the oven. The first thing I'm going to do is to remove the flue and so to do that I just gently push it up and move it to one side 
and then I can just remove each flue piece okay. then all that's left is there's um, one flue piece here and then the spark arrestor above deck but I can clean those from the outside So this is the top uh, little access hole. And there's another one down the bottom. So the one on the bottom is like a, an L shape there and you can see there's a, a pile of soot. This is um, something you'd get with the stove, this little rack and it just clips on the back here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be using it, but uh, you never know with these things. So I did use this uh, last night. Um, so this is the firebox. So I'm going to clean this out first. And there's a little uh, ash pan or tray that you can remove. So I'm just going to use a, an old spoon to scoop out as much as I can. So just in the firebox, and um, just to the right, there's a there's a, a, a vertical grill here, and so when you actually got a fire going, the hot gases can go across the top and up the flue but they can also go down and underneath the oven and then back up the flue so I'm just going to give the firebox a, a bit of a scrape with this wire brush and I'm trying to get down between the, the wall of the oven and this grill that's on the, the, the side here So I'm also trying to, to scrape the sides all around the firebox. Um, this is the stove top lid, so you can see it's, it's quite sooty. So I will give that a. There we are. So it's a bit less soot on there now. I'll put that to one side. And every now and then, I'm just going to get the vacuum cleaner on, get some of this soot. Now, one of the one of the the things that I I wish they would change. Um, with this stove is that the grill, the, the, the bottom or the grate I should say, um, is not removable, it's fixed and you've got quite a small gap here where the, the ash pan fits. Um, so it just makes it a little bit more difficult to, to clean underneath. Yes, now this is another important point, as you can maybe see uh, the, the window to the firebox is black, it's covered in soot and it's one of the, the warning signs if you, the window to your firebox, if the window to your firebox starts to soot up then that's a, a sure sign that you need to clean the entire stove. So I've given the, the firebox door a good clean so you can see it's nice and clear now. So my next step is uh, to get into this 
side access hole at the top and basically show it in there and get a good clean and try and persuade any bits of soot to come this way and I'm going to use the vacuum cleaner at the same time to limit the amount of mess I make Basically done all, all of the oven, and this is the, the, the bottom corner plate, so I'm just going to give that a clean. And then I've got uh, the top, the top edge. Not really very much soot on that. So the last thing I'm going to do now is each of the flue pieces, just going to give them a, a really good clean. And hopefully most of the soot is going to go into this bag at the bottom. So that's the, the bottom of the, the, the flue pipe coming from the deck. So I'm just going to nip out there. <clears throat> and give it a clean. Okay, so we're now on deck, and this is the, the flashing kit that I bought extra with the, the stove. And normally this would go through uh, tent material in a, a, one of the, sort of the bell tents or whatever kind of tent that these things go into. Um, but it's a very tight fit. And so I did use a bit of silicon spray uh, just to, to lubricate it enough to get the uh, the flue through there and then the idea is you put this bit on the top and this is the spark arrester I have got another couple of pieces of uh, flue left over so this could actually go higher if needed So that is the Outbacker Firebox Pro uh, camp stove being given a clean. Now this is something I would probably do, I think, looking at it once a month um, and probably just give it a quick clean uh, every couple of weeks depending on use if you're using it I mean at the moment um, I'm using this stove pretty much every day um, and you have to bear in mind that this is still uh, advertised as a portable stove um, for use mainly in tents there was an extra thing I was going to talk about was that they, they do some accessories, but one of them 
that I've seen is they, they do a like a um, a water cylinder that wraps round the flue. So when you're using the stove, you actually get uh, you can heat yourself two or three liters of water, and it has a little tap on it, so that you can get a nice plentiful supply of hot water. And if you're using old bits of pallet like I have, but I've break the pallet down into pieces. Um, it's free fuel, so you've got free heating, free cooking, and a possibility of free hot water. Um, so, uh, yeah, so thank you for bearing with me on this one, but uh, it was quite a big, uh, a big gamble to get it, and um, I, I've, I've been very delighted. I was going to say some more.